Greetings, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Creative Lab Awakening the Souls of Our Nations. This is the space that's created in cooperation between the 2025 initiative and the Hekal group from Jerusalem and the Klanschale group from Germany. We continue our work together, gathering in circle monthly, invoking the souls of our nations. Thank you for your presence. Over to you, Uta. Thank you and hello everyone. This is our 32nd lab session uh, in our monthly Creative Nations Lab. Uh, we are spiritual students from many nations that meet to practice taking on the function of elders, learning the skills of overseeing the affairs of the family of nations, it's like a training for becoming members of the United Nations of the future. And now, beginning with the new cycle in Aries, we are about to take a new step. We will expand our view now from looking at one nation, which we have done for a long time now, to focusing on a world situation. As most of you are aware, we have participated in the conference of the Aquarian Wisdom Center, uh, European Unification for Global Unity, which was just last week. So this lab session here, we will pick up on, on the work that has been done during the conference. Um, so it's quite a step, This it's quite a horizontal expansion that we are doing here from looking at a single nation to looking at the whole continent. Uh, so we feel it requires um, a reciprocal vertical strengthening also, stronger grounding, strengthening our center, our group field, and also stretching um, into a higher vantage point or linking with a, with a higher vantage point a bit more than we did until now. Over the many months that we are already working, we are engaged in building this group space together from which all this work proceeds and we do it as a, I could say, a sequential and quite scientific process. That's why we call it a lab. And uh, now taking this further step, we would like to focus our attention today on two realizations that we recently have, have ripened in us. <clears throat> The first is the realization that through this sustained rhythmical work, we are actually creating, constructing a real space on, on the inner planes. We recognize that we are not only doing as if, not only um, meeting in an imaginary space, but that actually we are creating together a real place which exists on the inner planes. Um, this is a, a growing experience in us, growing perception and um, also DK speaks about it when um, in, in Dina Dina 1, page 506, he gives an assignment to one of his disciples 
CDP, to build a garden on the inner plains. And uh, he's guiding her through this um, and how to do it. It's a project over several years. And uh, DK commented that uh, this garden is actually serving many souls on the inner plains for they come there for quiet contemplation and also it is possible in such a place to meet with spiritual seniors. So in our case, it's not a garden which we build, but uh, what we call a council chamber of elders. Um, a safe and dedicated space for national and international work. And the second realization, also described in that garden project, uh, what I just said already, that such a dedicated space enables a closer and more direct cooperation with our ashramic co-workers. And on the one hand, this sounds quite obvious, but when we really think about it, it's, it's quite profound and it has quite a practical significance. It opens new possibilities of service for us. So we're here in our nation's lab team. We're just at the threshold of realizing this uh, in a more practical way now. So we would like to take this opportunity today in this festival period between Aries and Vesak to convene in our council chamber of elders with this intention. Um, first, to realize that we are actually meeting in a specific already existing place, or at least coming about place um, on the inner plane. And then to make ourselves available for a more engaged, more specific cooperation with our ashramic co-workers. So, yeah, let's hold this in mind as we now go into meditation. Withdraw the attention inwards into our place of perfect stillness. Breathing, grounding in our body. Sensing our connection to the earth. We are calmly present as a soul in incarnation. And now consciously let us take on the task of being an elder, raising our vibration, calibrating our heart, our mind, our intuition and our will to this planetary function. And letting ourselves now being drawn 
to the beautiful building set in nature, which we already know. Entering into the quiet and clear and spacious chamber. Finding our seat, perhaps in a circle or half circle. And taking a moment to observe the chamber, realizing that this chamber is an actual place in the subtle world. Becoming aware now of elders from different parts of the world filing in and being seated. And we sense the rich background each brings into the space. The unique note of their nationality. Behind the outer diversity, the same wisdom shines through all of our eyes. Our faces radiate benevolence, integrity, freedom. A focused silence settles upon the chamber. We sense the presence of high beings. Taking a moment now to enter into resonance with the Ashramic co-workers who support and guide this Nations Lab project. And allow this rapport to become as tangible as possible. Let us take a moment for this.
We dedicate this high relationship and this shared space and our work today to the family of nations. Let us maintain this fine-tuned field now in our consciousness as we start our session. Taking now another minute of silence to just note down any impressions which perhaps we want to share later. Okay, so today we will focus on Europe. Looking at Europe as a whole, we notice immediately how much more complex this is than focusing on one single nation. And let's just mention a few general facts to prepare us for our meditative reflection. Perhaps, Alexander, can you bring the, the map of Europe? Europe is comprised of about 50 different nations. And we have this overarching structure of the European Union, which comprises about half of these nations. And uh, of course, Europe now again is divided into West and East with the war in Ukraine. We have this sharp separation between Western Europe and Russia while Russia comprises about a third of Europe. During the conference, we started to realize more fully the key position which Europe holds at the moment in this tectonic shift that we are going through on our planet. And Alexander may say a few more words about the conference itself at the end of today's meeting. We want to now um, get ready for our meditative look at Europe as a living entity in its present situation and possible next step. We have started this process during the conference, and so we can today build on it. Still at the present preliminary stage of our energetic research of Europe, we have, of course, more questions than answers on all levels, even the physical, and more so on the emotional and mental level, let alone the soul of Europe. 
So to conceive of Europe as a living entity may require ongoing spiritual research. And it's a question if we in the nation's lab here, if we want to um, develop this further, have several quest, uh, uh, sessions about it, perhaps in the sharing we can um, get your feedback, uh, what you think about this. Um, so for now, let's make a start with just taking the opportunity to open ourselves in each other's presence and under the inspiration of our ashramic co-workers to have a first glimpse. And maybe we get some new insight or some rudimentary sense of an outline of this entity of Europe. So we will do now a meditative observation, quite general, going from the physical expression through the emotional and mental levels to the soul, um, and uh, doing it just I would say almost playfully having a first look, not straining our mental faculties, not trying yet to make sense of what we what we perceive, just uh, sensing. Um, and we recommend again to have pen and paper ready. Uh, sometimes it's helpful to jot down impressions during the process of the observation, but only if you feel like. And after the meditation, we will share our findings. So let us touch back into our place of inner stillness. and realizing our being together as elders in our council chamber. In focused silence. In the presence of our ashramic co-workers. And into our receptive space, we invite now Europe as a living entity. Just welcoming it, sensing it, opening to Europe. We invoke the presence of the higher beings who guide Europe. We attune to the vibration of the regent of Europe, Master R. And let us focus now on the physical plane of Europe, visualizing this large area of Europe from Portugal in the very west through northern and central Europe 
including Britain and including Russia in the very East. Just sensing this large area. Now we shift our gaze to the emotional field of Europe, sensing its qualities, the astral forces at play, the points of conflict within this large field of tension, And perhaps also seeing areas of harmony, emotional and maturity, qualities of the heart. Let's take a minute or two to just observe the dynamics in this emotional field. Okay, now let us shift our gaze to the mental field of Europe, this vast meeting place of different thought forms and ideological streams. Observing, taking first a look at the various national thought forms, just sensing without any mental effort, just getting an impression Now focusing in on the structure of the European Union.
being aware of those European nations which are not part of the European Union. And let's see now if we can discern the overall tension between the Western thought form and the Eastern thought form meeting. Now let's have a look at uh, any overlapping influences like NATO and other influences from beyond Europe. We take another moment to just be with the whole mental landscape of Europe. Can we discern an overall quality of Europe? What is Europeanness? And now, last point, let us lift our consciousness as a group into more direct resonance with our senior co-workers in the ashramic world. Let's attune again to the vibration of the region of Europe. And holding two, three minutes of focused silence, just making ourselves receptive to the ashramic vision of Europe coming into a higher order.
okay. Gently releasing now the thought field of our higher co-workers from our consciousness. And also releasing Europe. Just remaining another moment in the silence of the council chamber in each other's presence. Letting our impressions settle into the group field. And grounding back now into our own personal field, into our physical location, releasing any surplus energy as a blessing into the earth. Okay. We invite you now to start our sharing. Sharing as elders. Perhaps any glimpses of a higher order of Europe or any impressions of the council chamber of elders itself which may add substance to it or any other impressions. And um, may we remind you please to speak slowly. This helps maintaining the meditative attitude and also makes it easier for our dedicated note takers. Thank you, Margo and Desha. So you can just raise your hand and we will unmute you. Greetings, everyone. This is Margot from Canada. Thank you, Uta. 
meditation, a sacred space in the council chamber, and the presence of ashramic co-workers and David co-workers holding space for the work. So many notes when we were inviting Europe, so many notes and a, an underlying heaviness. There was a sense of expectancy when we were invoked to the higher beings of Europe and Master R, a sense of expectancy as if they are waiting for the workers on the ground to participate. And the physical plane, Russia and Great Britain stood out primarily. Emotional, there were some pockets of peace with battle going on above and another force observing. Some movement was beginning, a new movement was beginning as we work. It's much static on the mental plane and a sense of, or an, a growing urge. If I can describe emergement, an urge mentally to unify. Structure of the U, <clears throat> pardon me, the EU, well, there's still a pulse. It's not flatlined. And the nations that are not part of the EU, I, I didn't register anything at all. Western and Eastern thought forms meeting. Um, I've recently seen the movie Avatar and they would connect with something by inserting their tail like a plug into a socket. And there was a sense of, of um, this initial little thread from each nation tentatively moving out. And that, that first thread was, was just beginning to connect. And there were many more threads that were there just, just waiting for, for the time for, for things to ripen. With NATO, my head started to ache and it was as if something was blocking my seeing. With the mental landscape of Europe, there was essential heart, culture and cooperation. So as if the, the will to do this is there. And finally, with direct resonance with the elders in the region of Europe, a spark. It was as if we touched something very high and fine, and there was a first spark in response. Thank you. Thank you, Margot. Lots to ponder, indeed. Hello, uh, Marianne from Montreal, Canada. I will speak slowly. Uh, as I was meditating, I wrote a small text, Europe united and divided, gathered and scattered, those who belong, the opponents, the same Europe, one continent, still ravaged by fatricidal wars, weakened, bloodless, the past carries it and condemn it, stars, kings, emperors, revolutions, persecutions, conquests, genocides. And in the midst of disasters, painters, writers, musicians, out of this mess, a civilization is born, European, which recognizes itself. Why? 
maybe the soul of Europe. Thank you. I can put the text on the chat. Yes, please. I wanted to ask for it. Beautiful. Thank you. This is Deborah from the US. And thank you for this splendid opportunity. It was very potent. Scanning, scanning Europe, there were so many impressions. But to me, most of all, how full of color and life and art and expression and uh, a certain joy of living, joie de vie, uh, is the legacy of, of Europe and And the, one of the deepest impressions was its underground spiritual tributaries from the alchemy of the emerald tablets to the Knights Templar circulating through and the um, the sacred striving of the of the cathedrals and and the arthurian quest for the grail and the scottish rite and the Masons, there is so much embedded wisdom and devotion and science, and also the deep mystical soul uh, embedded in Russia and the legacy of St. Sergius and just there's tremendous wisdom, but also, as the previous speaker said, such a legacy of war. And I had the impression, which, which I really hadn't had before, that somehow in the east-west divide and the uh, apparent uh, striving for for domination both in europe and the world expressed by the us and and russia was almost that those two nations in particular and in, and uh, and by extension uh, britain uh because of the innate triangle there took on took on that war aspect so that individual nations in europe after the two world wars, primarily, not completely, but primarily stopped fighting with each other for conquest uh, between individual nations. That's 
that karma seemed to consolidate and 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 concentrate in the two sixth ray personality superpowers, uh, so to speak, which is an interesting proposition. I hadn't contemplated before or registered. And of course, smaller European nations are are pulled magnetically into, you know, NATO or alliance with uh, Russia and the tug of war for for Ukraine. Um, but it's almost like it could be transformed by the three nations taking on the abolition of war and the threat of war as service karma. Mm. And again, that concept had not occurred to me before. But in the interim, the underlying circulation throughout Europe of the of the continuity, really, of the esoteric legacy um, was really rising to the surface invocatively to be recognized and resurrected into a new Aquarian alchemy. Mm -hmm. well, those were my impressions. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Hello, dear ones. Uh, Maria Cristina here. Hi. Uh, first, I would just really want to acknowledge and recognize the recent conference on European unity, which seemed to signal you know a quantum unfoldment if you do if you will on this work of evoking the soul of nations starting with jerusalem years ago is in a beautiful path entering i do believe a new uh, expanded phase thank you thank you all thank you uta I would just comment as far as the meditation or as far as the specific topic is that alliances are shifting. There's maybe different ways to look at them. Like, I mean, I looked at Melbourne's cultural map and that was interesting, although. <laughs> but as far as Europe itself goes, even whilst on the eastern defining Europe, including Russia, of course. And Russia does link two ways, as we know from the keynote. Certainly, I do believe always a very strong history, or I don't know, influence of Europe, but even though France is said to have been, I think, in the destiny of the nations, been the main influence over Europe in these past Piscean age. And I wonder, however, about the Western 
definition of including including Great Great Britain. And always, as we know, Great Britain is also very much associated with the Commonwealth. And I just wonder if that was not part of these shifting alliances and this Brexit, which has many questions, but it did happen. And I just wonder if that is not part of these reestablishing of alliances and with mm. Britain, not so much with Europe, but the, the British Commonwealth. And that would go with the fact that there would be London as the key center. And then we have Geneva as a key center, as we know, one of the five planetary inlets. I'm just um, using this as safe space to explore a thought that I've had for a while and thought I would share. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Very interesting, Maria Christina. I have also half baked thoughts about this, and I had uh, Geneva very strongly in my in my meditation. There's several hands were raised, uh, but I noticed, Rasita, your hand was raised, and I know in the past we had issues with that. If you still would like to raise your hand again. This is Rosita from England. I I was feeling that we don't know who the European is yet. We, um, a new European is coming, is forming. Um, Europe is gathering to itself peoples from all over the world through refugees and others that are pouring in um, from very different cultures. And uh, we think of Europe is uh, traditionally as a consolidation of white people. Um, all colors are coming in. And I feel like the new European is being born, is not born yet. Mm. And I saw um, the spirit of Europe as a figure like Demeter. Um, uh, the bringing in cycles of loss and plenty, always creating an edge for new growth and regeneration. And this is very apparent through history. Um, about Brexit, um, it seems that Europe, I, I didn't vote for Brexit, I find it painful. But it seems that Europe needs to get the balance between the one and the many, and the many and the one, right, just right, exact. And somehow in Britain there was a feeling this was not so. And I think when it is so, uh, Britain will step in again. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm. Rosita, can you say another sentence about this balance between the one and the many? Um, I suppose it's like a family with many children and uh, each child needs to get attention. And in Europe, what I see is France and Germany are very strong and Basically, that's needed at this point because it creates stability, it creates this kind of strong structure. But in the long run, there has to be more equality uh, between all the nations and more, and the strength has to be spread um, so that all feel 
completely um, part of the family. It used to be that, well, for a long time, it has been that the North is rich and powerful and the South is, is poor, coming out of poverty. So already quite a bit of this has shifted and now there's the East to consider. Um, there's much work ahead. Thanks a lot, Rosita, for your thoughts. Hi, this is Helen from Jerusalem. Um, this meditation um, was powerful for me. I uh, am really very grateful that we can stand in the um, in the chamber, in the chamber of elders, and look. And what I have been, uh, what I have been experiencing, while we entered this entity of uh, um, of Europe, looking at it uh, was something very, um, uh, very heavy. Um, I thank you, Mariana and uh, Rosita, for the, for for the perspective that uh, you brought on uh, on Europe united and divided, and the new Europe with the migration. And it has to do with what I sensed also during the meditation of what is Europeanness. I saw. A piece of continent that uh, is influenced by the north, the south, the east, and the west, and that influences the south, the north, the east, and the west. It's a cradle of uh, migration to other continents. And it's also a recipient of migration from other continents. And to see it as a cradle of migration, outward, I wondered why, why was this need of migrating, of expanding? Is it a closed nutshell? Was it too, too, uh, um, um, too small or too tight for humanity at the time? It needed to explode outward dispersing and uh, creating a from from this main main body creating independent and uh, autonomous selves um, it needs to be a bridge and not a barrier that it has been uh, between um, between the different parts of the world Dafka, they have been exactly because of this migration and and due to this migration. And it got to be um, not only a barrier, trying to be a bridge maybe, but also a battlefield, a battlefield of its own creation of the cells that it has created and that are um, in battle on its, uh, on its earth, on its uh, ground. Um, with all the richness, I felt a big, big heaviness. And uh, the needs really if we do a deal with Europe, which we have begun to to strengthen very much this um, space that we look at it, from which we look at it. Thank you. 
You mean the council chamber to strengthen our ground on which yes. we stand while we look at this? Mm. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'd like to, uh, this is Jonathan uh, from Portugal presently. Um, I'd like to first of all acknowledge the wisdom that is overshadowing as well as being shared it really feels like uh, there is this beginning of a uh, new form of leadership or eldership let's say eldership in in uh process firing and uh let us acknowledge that Europe, like humanity, is in crisis. So it, we contain the problems of humanity as well as the potential for working out the solutions by receiving the new wisdom for Aquarius. And I think this is the nature of the crisis that represents Pisces, crystallized, looking, seeking, uh aspiring perhaps invoking a new idea a new alignment a new purpose it's to purpose i feel that our attention is best served because then we receive the precipitation the insights and the intuition as to our next step the great inspiration uh, and contribution that came conference and is being shared today uh together which i find most inspiring is that this idea of the soul of europe is being refreshed and renewed in our awareness and in the coming months perhaps may become our common point of alignment and if we hold this as groups in the coming cycle this realization can be the potency of such an a flowering, let's say, of inspiration and energy. Because Europe is seeking a new purpose. Humanity is seeking a new purpose. Um, my my uh, insight is that Europe is at a point where the many nations to whom we easily identify as I, my national psyche, my nation, is receptive to we, a new sense of uh, that which is our common, like, like uh, Rosita said, the new European. This is a wonderful idea. This sense that isn't hasn't been lost for so long. It was. It is only maybe 120 years when we could walk from one end of Europe to the other without borders. That is five generations. Of course, Europe has experienced many wars and many struggles for 2,000 years, but we could nevertheless more or less walk freely across the whole continent. So the work that is being handed to us now by hierarchy is the work of redemption. This is Aquarian group work. So Pisces has given us the legacy of the karma and the nature of the crisis which we are facing. But the Aquarian uh, spirit moving through a group life accepting the conditions that we are each experiencing and part of, we can uh, tr begin the process of transforming it and to bring about this new um, sense of identity, perhaps, which is so needed simply by holding this alignment 
to that higher polarity that uh, Uta guided us toward, the regent, Master R, the ashram of the, uh, of the new synthesis. This is something which I find quite inspiring. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan, for these deep new thoughts, new insights, bubbling insights, unifying. Hmm. Uh, hello, this is Jill from UK. Following on from Rosita and Jonathan, uh, I agree with Rosita, Brexit to me seemed a very bad move. And I'm picking up by various things I'm receiving in emails that there are a great number of people who are very unhappy with the situation and want it reversed. And it wouldn't unduly surprise me to see that in time it will be reversed. Uh, and from the Europe point of view, um, I think, as has been sort of intimated, um, it's made up of uh, many countries and some of them are still struggling. I'm in contact with someone in Greece and they've been having one or two problems with them. Um, their government, as we a lot of countries are at the moment. And I think they're having a harder job to sort of unite together than, say, Russia, that's ruled by someone who's going to have the last say whatever happens. So they've got to take a certain path that their leader is saying, whereas people in Europe have more say. But I think um, Europe has been shaken by this Ukrainian war because everybody thought, oh, good, Europe won't be at war anymore. And now it is. So I think it's um, probably put everything in a little unstable position and probably it will settle down into a brighter future, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Hello, this is Judy from uh, United States. Uh, what stood out to me was that there was more unity amongst people than there was actually amongst nations. That governments didn't always represent uh, the people's interests. They represented their own, um, almost like a schism uh, between the idea that the government works for the people, and in some cases, the governments were working for themselves to be the best, to be seen. And so there is a unity, but it's coming from the people themselves. Uh, it felt like a family that wanted to come together and uh, hopefully moving their own nations to represent their best interests. Hmm. Very important point to keep in mind and look out for. Beneath what the news tell us, what the governments say. Thanks, Judy. Hello. Yeah. I'm uh, Mince. I'm speaking here from Geneva. There are two points which I want to uh, touch upon. Um, we were asked in the meditation to bring in the qualities of our own nationality. And there I thought, oops, what I'm going to do? I'm Dutch from origin, but I lived 30 years in France. And now I live 12 years in Geneva. 
So I don't really know what my nationality is anymore. But that brings me to the second point, and that is unity in diversity. It's easier said than done. But by committing to the to Europe, to the European Union, by the way, I'm living in Switzerland with Geneva as a, as a central point, but Switzerland is not in the EU. And that's another story which I will not go into because I'm, I'm faced with it like every day that the Swiss do want to go into the EU, but they aren't. But I want to say is that being committed to Europe forces people to work together. The Dutch and the French have totally opposite characteristics. If you look at the race, the, the planets, etc., etc. Normally, the Dutch and the French cannot go along. But they are both in Europe. They are both committed to it. And they sometimes they threat to run away, but they don't. Because even though we think that there is a lot going wrong, there's much more that's going well. And they appreciate it, and we know it. And why are things going well? Because we have committed to work together. There is an ideal behind all that. And that ideal, even though it isn't expressed uh, in much of the publicity which we see, it is still there, and it forces people to work together. And I think this is one of the strong points of Europe. Here I'm talking about those who are in the EU. But there are many other countries who, and then I come back to, to Switzerland, even though it isn't in the EU, it still wants very strongly to work, and it does very strongly work together with Europe. So again, this idea belonging to something, Europe, belonging to the European soul, whatever that may be, because we, we, can, we can think about how we do define the European soul, I think this is an important concept to keep in mind. I'm, a, I'm more in favor of a gradual evolution towards a certain ideal than breaking down things for a revolution. And I think that as I perceive the evolution of Europe, it is converging to an ideal which they have put down in the constitution and things like that. In practice, we are not there. I could have the same. A uh, story, but I won't. But I will just mention it, and then I will I will shut up. Uh, I could say the same thing of the UN. There's a lot of criticism of the UN. I'm here in Geneva. I can just go to the UN if I want to. I know there is a lot that's not going wrong. Uh, personally, there's that's going wrong. But again, there is much, much, much more more that is going well, and I just want to emphasize that. Thank you. Thank you, Minze, for this for this thought of the gradual evolution being um, being preferable to a rapid uh, revolution. Um, I also had in this meditation a sense of yeah, it is still possible to repair the EU rather than having to, to deconstruct it. Uh, it's just a subjective, meditative experience. Thank you. Hello, Kiki from the United States. I am. I have been feeling, or it, the feeling is, for a while now, that Europe seems to be almost becoming the new melting pot. I mean, with the common market quite a few years ago, which then became the EU, sure there were mistakes, but they seem to be trying to come together as many peoples in many countries and nations to work as one. And Brexit, I'm not British, but I do also feel it's, it's not the way to go. Um, I, I think you want to walk, work together, everyone needs to work together and the melting pot of Europe with them, even with the migration and how they're trying to deal with that. Nothing is perfect all the time, but they're trying and they seem to be trying more than any other 
group or continent is trying. And I, I think there's tremendous, I see tremendous hope there. It, it's very positive, lots of light. Thanks a lot, bye. Okay, hello, I'm Mario from Finland. Uh, one day before the Russian attacked Ukraine, then my daughter uh, saw the dream where man came behind her, put hands on her eyes and said to her that what is happening now, it is not possible to prevent. And the next day, the Russian attack to the Ukraine. So definitely this is then the karmic reasons behind. And I hope that, of course, it is giving up something new. And also it has brought people somehow together and, and uh, uh, raised their willingness very much to help Ukrainians. I think that's all I would like to say now. Thank you, Arjo. Hi, this is Anne Kay from Victoria, Canada. And I have had two things, two impressions that came through. One of them was visual and it was a great flash of red lightning. And what I understood that to be as this conversation and sharing has taken place is that perhaps Europe is the burning ground for the world of this shifting from separation to a more inclusive um, aspect of our being. And it feels like it is the reflection of what is happening not only individually, but also to humanity in general. And so it feels like it is the burning ground for us and a learning space for us to understand what group consciousness is about. There have been many attempts through the common market, um, through the European Union. Um, in many ways, we have been trying this over centuries and this feels somehow to be the culmination and with the energy of the seventh ray and the Aquarian age arriving, coinciding together, these energies seem to be the place where we will find perhaps some new illumination when it comes to an understanding of what it is to live a group life, to live, as Mario just said, the we of who we are understanding what also was said earlier by Rosita, what is the understanding that we have between the one and the many, and perhaps shifting the frequency, not necessarily the words, but the frequency of our understanding around that. And just as there have been two previous world wars, Perhaps this will be the final in a triplicate of this tug of war of me, we, me, we. Perhaps we will be brought through the Christ consciousness, the love consciousness, to the very magnet at the center, which is that of love and of the heart. Thank you. 
Thank you, Anne, for these very inspiring words of hope. Uh, Europe as a crucible for group consciousness. I will take this with me. Um, yeah, thank you for all of your sharings. Very rich today. Very deep. Um, I think we are quite at the end. Alexander want to add a few more thoughts and uh, information, networking information. So um, over to you, Alexander. Thank you, Uta. Um, I'm looking through the notes. I just uh, see that Karen wanted to share something. Karen, if you still would like to share, please raise your hand. So, uh, apologies, I didn't see your note. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry, I was trying to raise my hand earlier. Um, I, I'm so grateful uh, for this. I was, it's my first time attending this group, but I did attend the conference on European Union last weekend, and it was very, very inspiring to me. Um, I won't go through all my notes, but I, I would like to say um, a couple of things. One is that there was a lot of focus on the various vices, glamours, and virtues of the personality rays of the countries, the, ca the capitals and the leaders. I think that has been such an important piece of the learning for me. And um, that I do believe as Judy and um, Mintz, I believe your name is, um, that I had a huge, huge um, bolus of a desire for unity through diversity in Europe. And that is, that is the high note that I believe we all need to be supporting in in this incredible work. So thank you very much. Thank you, Karen. Um, indeed, the, the conference that many of us participated last weekend was a uh, um, special opportunity or for us to look into the field of our service and recognizing our level of responsibility as uh, practicing meditators and uh, some people uh, shared afterwards that there was a certain shift uh, in the energy field uh, of uh, the way how we communicate and how we engage. And um, that was exactly our purpose when we agreed to, to, to join the conference. We, I mean, the Hikal group uh, and the 2025 initiative group. And, um, and for us, it was this opportunity, we saw opportunity for the community to meet our own differences and try to shift upwards and that was the core of the offering that we did to the conference the safe space for difficult conversations and uh, which we held together with the wisdom group uh, so three of our groups been holding this space objectively and we continue holding it and um, in cooperation with the Seventh Ray Institute, we will be uh, inviting uh, everyone to join uh, to the Vesak meditation, the joint in the in collectively joint space. We will stand together in this listening mode, continuing holding this safe space for all of us for the entire community listening what the elders have to communicate to us and then we intend to come again again together during the gemini festival 
and using that opportunity to distribute the energy of this uh, high season of three festivals to open conversations or continue conversations that started in last weekend at the European Unification Conference and work together to learn how we can overcome our differences of perceptions and still hold together the intention, hierarchical intention in service to humanity. And so that's, we invite you to join holding this space and holding this intention, visualizing this safe space within the community where we can learn together to make this next step. Much gratitude. Yeah, I wanted to add one point to this. Thank you, Alexander. Um, and uh, our next lab session will be three days before the Vesak. So um, this is a very high powered opportunity to continue this work. We will reflect on all of your sharings um, also in order to know if we should uh, in the in the lab in in our nation's lab here if we should continue the um, the focus on um, on Europe for a bit um, if you have any feedbacks on this uh, we will be happy to receive them uh, you I think you all have my email um, yeah, continuing to hold this this focus. It is like Maria Cristina, how, you, how did you call it? A quantum, a quantum step we have been doing. Um, that's what it feels like, and so we need to get used to it now. To to uh, to to grow into this new opportunity that we have of this. Uh, upgraded um, um, unified work between all our groups and uh, perhaps as Jonathan was saying uh, perhaps the soul of Europe is a, uh, is a higher point that um, will help us to align more closely uh, all our efforts who knows to be continued Thank you very much. Bye-bye.